the 2012 editions of the IFC, IBC, and NFPA-1 fire codes have been updated to include new requirements for standardized fire service elevator keys. This video provides a brief overview of the new code requirements. The proponents of the new code cited several reasons for the changes. The ability to quickly access the location of the emergency. The fact that non-standardized keys may not be readily available at the time of the emergency. Concerns that the correct non-standardized key may have to be identified from a large ring of keys causing unnecessary delays. And to address security risks that arise from unauthorized access to these keys. The new code requirements for fire service elevator keys fall under four basic categories. Standardized access to elevators equipped with Phase 1 recall and Phase 2 in-car operation. Preventing unauthorized key duplication preventing unauthorized key distribution, and restricting access to keys to only authorized people. On standardization, the code states that buildings with elevators equipped with Phase 1 emergency recall, Phase 2 emergency in-car operation, or a fire service access elevator must be equipped to operate with a standardized fire service elevator key approved by the fire code official. On unauthorized duplication, the code states that fire service elevator keys shall be of a patent-protected design to prevent unauthorized duplication. Patent-protected keys defend against unauthorized duplication by restricting the manufacturing and distribution of key blanks or uncut keys. Keys without patent protection, like the current FEOK1 key, become widely available to the general public without any authorization required. For distribution of key blanks, the code states that fire service elevator keys shall be factory restricted by the manufacturer to prevent the unauthorized distribution of key blanks. No uncut key blanks shall be permitted to leave the factory. In addition to a patent protected design, factory restricted keys greatly reduce the risk of keys being duplicated by retail outlets for individuals without the authorization to possess these keys. Again, the current FEOK1 key does not meet this requirement. Regarding access to keys, the code states that access to standardized fire service elevator keys shall be restricted to the following. Elevator owners or their authorized agents, elevator contractors, elevator inspectors of the jurisdiction, fire code officials of the jurisdiction, and the fire department and other emergency response agencies designated by the fire code official Restricting access of fire service elevator keys ensures that elevators will be available when needed for emergency response while improving security for building occupants by preventing the use of elevator controls for criminal intent. The International Building Code states that all elevators shall be equipped to operate with a standardized fire service elevator key in accordance with the International Fire Code. The new codes were intended to provide a level of security for the standardized key. The proponents noted that access to the key that can take control of an elevator is an existing area of vulnerability that was not addressed in the past with simple key designs. The new codes also include rules for safeguarding the keys. Regarding jurisdiction, the proponents noted that it is expected and preferred that a state-level agency designate a standardized key for all jurisdictions to provide for a statewide standardized key. A statewide standardized key provides the benefits of quick and consistent access, along with the security to protect building tenants and occupants. For more information, refer to the 2012 IFC IBC codes, as well as the 2012 NFPA 1 fire codes, or you can go to www.medico.com elevator.